I'm getting a lot of messages from students, private messages, I'll add, um, about unexpected token errors. So I've written up a file which will give us an unexpected token error. I called it unexpected.js, there's the file name. And I'm going to run it. And syntax error, unexpected token, else. So let's look at the code. It even points us to line seven. Um, right there, see? Line seven. So if we go and look at line seven, sure enough, we see an else. And we think, what's so unexpected about this else? It's coming after this if, right? See these curly braces? And, uh, you know, here's my condition. Here's my if, right? My if statement, right? Well, it turns out that this little semicolon right here is the culprit. It turns out that actually semicolons alone, those are valid code. They just don't do anything. A lone semicolon by itself, that is valid code. It's a statement. It says don't do anything. And likewise, if I write out something like if, you know, maybe true, that, then what's going to happen is this if condition is going to check this statement, which is just a Boolean value true, right? It's a literal true. So if this is true, and it is, it will just literally do nothing because it's a semicolon. It doesn't matter if you have curlies here. They are separated. There's a separation. This semicolon is separating the condition, the if, and the curlies here. So what happens is when you put a semicolon after your if, then all of this, uh, all this stuff in these curlies will happen every single time your code runs, right? This will always happen because this if over here, well, it'll just execute this semicolon and this, and now this stuff in the curlies is basically, it's basically not a part of the if it's, it's just code that'll always run. So we can fix this by removing the semicolon. So let's go back to uh, our, um, here we go. And if we remove the semicolon, let's put a space in there and make it look pretty. Now we have a proper if statement followed by curlies with nothing in between. See, there's uh, nothing here, except my comment that I just did. And so anyways, I'll, I'll save this, and now I'll see if my code is correct. Uh-oh. <sighs> Looks like, again, unexpected token, a semicolon. And um, on line 13, line 13. So what's on line 13? Well, it's the last line, and there's our semicolon. Now, wait a minute. Don't we want to end our statements with semicolons? This is probably correct, right? Well, JavaScript is looking for something before that semicolon. Um, and upon analyzing this, it looks like it's looking for a matching something. Luckily, Vim and Atom and Sublime, they, ma they, they match things for you. So I have my parentheses highlighted here on line 13, and sure enough, the matching one is on line 12, or 11. See? But, like I said, JavaScript expects something before before this semicolon. There should be there should be something here. Well, it's this curly it's this parentheses right here. We don't have a matching parentheses. See how nothing's highlighted? And sure enough, if I put another parentheses here, now I've got my matching parentheses. And let's try that. And it printed out, it printed out a message, so we don't, we don't get an error message anymore. And you might think that everything's perfect and everything's hunky dory, right? Well, no, because first of all, this fix that I did, it was bad style. We don't need this pair of parentheses. It's better just to delete it. It's unnecessary. There's no reason to have it. So, and that should still run. Yep. 
So now that we have our style all fixed up, there's something wrong with the code. This is a this is a logic error, right? This isn't an error that you get a message for. These are the sneakiest kinds of errors. These are the errors you'll miss. See, unexpected unexpected token error is nice because the compiler yells at you and says, "Hey, there's an error," and it even points to the line where it is. Sometimes the error is before before the line it points to, but in general, it'll hone you in on the right spot, right? But now we got an error. See, my code printed out beat up a conno box, but if you look at my, at my at my code here, so I've got a variable called something, right? And it's and then I, I say, hey, are you equal to definitely definitely special? Well, it shouldn't be, right? It's it's definitely ordinary, right? So no, something is not equal to definitely special, which means that this should happen. So I take words and I split it on spaces, and I get an array of just the words. So since definitely ordinary has two words, my LM array is going to have two elements, so indices 0 and 1. And the last element at indice, zero, indice 1 is, should be ordinary. And I'm going to overwrite it with special. So now my array should be definitely and special. And now I'll join my array back together with the array method, right? Glue it back together with spaces. Now something should be definitely special. So what I'm expecting here, I'm expecting to say, and that's why I told them my car is definitely special. But instead, look what we see. Um, whoa, cool! I can do that. Didn't know I could do that. Anyway, we're seeing beat up a conno box, right? But that shouldn't happen because this was true, which means that this else shouldn't happen. And why is this else happening? That semicolon right there. So what's happening is, if this is true, then this is executed, and in fact, it does. Then we have this else with an, with an empty statement, just a semicolon. So that means this else won't execute, right, because the if was true. <clears throat> but if you remember what I talked about a few minutes ago, because of that semicolon here, this, uh, this stuff in the curlies will happen every time, right? This is basically, an, th this works normally, this semicolon won't execute, but then this code which we meant, we meant for this code to only execute if the else executed, right? Well now because of this uh, semicolon, this code will always execute. So something will always become a beat up the conno box. And if you don't believe me, watch. I'll just um, replace this with true, right? That means no matter what, this if is always going to execute and something will always become um, something special and in fact I'll even say something equals something special, right? So now you don't even need to know how join and split work. You don't need to know about array, how arrays work, right? It's just if true, something equals something special. Else, don't do anything. And sure enough, it still beat up a conno box, right? So we know this is overriding this because of this this uh, semicolon. But if I erase this semicolon, there we go. Something special. And then, of course, you would... Uh, there we go. That's how you, that's how you would make it look. And hopefully I can just un yep, undo that. Uh, get my thing back. There we go. So the original fix was just to remove that semicolon right there. So now this else is properly attached this code block, right? Putting this semicolon here basically detaches, it, it, it uh, disconnects the else from this code, right? So, now my code works. All right, so that's, I just covered unexpected token errors, I covered semicolons in between curly braces and their, you know, if else's, and I talked about you know, that parenthesis on line, uh, it was line 11, I have an unnecessary parenthesis. So I hope this helps you students on your homeworks, and good luck, see you in class.